These videos are educational in nature and are designed to help people over 21 who smoke cigarettes switch to a less harmful alternative. Mm, all right, well, what's up, everybody? It's Grim Rain back here. And yeah, today I'm going to do my review, not for this really sick Boro mod, but for the bridge, the RBA on the inside. This is the six from Alexa. I picked this up from Indonesia and it was the tank itself that first caught my eye. That just looks cool. I just think that looks super dope. I like seeing some printing, some something different on a boro tank. I'm gonna rinse this out. I'm not gonna take you with me. I'll be right back. This is a, it can do boro, it can do dot. I've only been running it in boro despite it coming with both of them. Just look, all my stuff's boro. I don't have a lot of dot stuff, but here's the dot stuff. Chimney for dot, the base for dot, the tank is similarly styled and sorry, not sorry. That's just badass. I love the way that looks. Win me over with a little white paint on a boro tank. I get some airflow paint pins and I get some spare O-rings for the Boro tank itself. They do one millimeter, two millimeter, three millimeter, and boom, I've got the four millimeter in there right now because hashtag restricted lung life. This is the deck. It's pretty great. This ring that is labeled Boro threads off so I can thread this down onto a 510. It's got some styling to it, like those posts are sort of angled like that, but it's real simple. It's real straightforward. Single coil, leads go in on both sides. I do have to make sure to trim my leads very, very, very close. This is an RBA that benefits from putting my coils in, clipping my leads off, taking the coil out completely, clipping my leads a little farther in and then reinstalling the coil. There is no tolerance in this. You can see this barrel is a tight fit. But the payoff is some really good flavor because this is a really tiny chamber. I'm going to do the ether technique on this. And that is not to do the tunnel technique and treat it more like an RTA and cut these before I put the cap on. That looks good. And that's all the wasted cotton I had phrasing. And as I'm putting on the top cap, I'll just sweep the cotton away from that seam. Really super very happy with that. And because it's from Alexa, I'm obviously going to put my milky peach gummy in here. Be very, very last of my milky peach gummy. Perfection. That's what we're looking for. The boro ring goes back on. Then I can just put this in the tank. It's a slidey glass tank, which aren't generally my favorite, but all of the fit and finish and O-rings on this, it's like they were made for each other. Obviously they were. Then the chimney goes on. Just O-rings that again fit great together. Front panel can go on. Those O-rings are really great. We can bleh. Done perfection has been achieved. At least, I mean, right now we haven't vaped it yet. But we're about to go full normal view. Go now. Getting a good crackle from this Twisted Timmy coil on the inside. And I just want to say, I'm really honestly relieved that this vapes so well because it looks so cool that I might use it anyway, even if it didn't vape that well. Like I'm that, like it's so cool looking, I might use it anyway. Thankfully, as I said, it happens to vape awesome. The airflow is surprisingly smooth. It's not like extraordinarily smooth, like meshed out smooth. This is like 2016 smooth. There's a little bit of sharpness on it, but it's not enough to like, put me off in any way. Full, full, full disclosure, I have only used this in the restricted lung four millimeter mode. I've used plenty of three millimeter and two millimeter restricted lungs. I've used plenty of one millimeter mouth to lungs. I, and I am a big fan of all of those air flows, but lately, right now, my jam has just been four millimeter restricted lung, give it to me. The deck is easy to build. The flavor is really good. The airflow is nice and honestly, everything on this from the bridge itself the rba itself the deck the top cap all of the o-rings slide and snap together i mean flawlessly i don't generally jam on like front glass slidey boro tanks they're not my favorite because once that o-ring goes then that's kind of it and, and the boro just ends up going away this has been nothing but perfect precise sliding amazingness. It doesn't feel too tight. It doesn't feel too loose. Everything feels snug. Everything feels secure. I have seen, I think just because it's a big restricted lung four millimeter, there's been some condensation 
near and around the bottom of the airflow itself, near and around the back of the tank and the few times that I've re-wicked this. It's just so wholly enjoyable. Like even the packaging looks cool and sometimes bridges or RBAs rather, I just continuously say bridge and I think I need to get that out of my lexicon because I think it's most widely agreed on that these are RBAs now. That's the nomenclature that we're going with. I just want to make sure that I'm using the right words. Most RBAs that go back and forth between a boro and a dot and a boro and a dot tend to be, I don't know, a little bit fiddly, a little bit cumbersome. This is really direct, really straightforward, so easy to do. And not to keep talking about how cool this Boro tank is, but it's not just printed all around it. It's actually like somewhat deeply engraved down the sides of it. And that just, that added look, that added texture, it is obviously really doing a lot for me right now. <laughs> I can't think of one even slightly thing that has annoyed me about this. Maybe I have to trim my leads really, really close, but that's not a deal breaker. It's not completely perfect. And I think that's what's gonna keep it from a perfect like 10 banana sticker rating. I think it's gonna go about nine banana stickers. And that's only because of clipping the leads. It, it is just a process and there is no wiggle room. They are unforgiving. But once my coil's in there, I'm not rebuilding this, but most likely maybe twice a year, once a year. Let me just say something real quick. Changing my coils once to twice a year, that's not with excessively heavy use. I've been told by many people this spawned a whole discussion within my Discord, within my Patreon, and according to available science, and I'm going to post some links in the description, Farsolinos has some science on this. The other guy, I can't remember, he has some science on this. Based on just pocket science and the discussion I had a few days ago with some of my patrons, we decided that about every three months, no matter the condition of the coil, it should be changed. Coil degradation is a very real thing and pushing these coils way past their limits is probably not a great idea. I do plan on doing a full video on this subject later, but I had to put it in here. So back to the other guy, it's the end of the video. Now I can't tell you where to get these or how much they cost because I legitimately do not know. I guess like a deal breaker price for me would be anywhere approaching or over like $80. It's just so tasty, way tastier than cigarettes. In fact, if you're watching this right now and you still smoke combustible tobacco cigarettes, it's time to switch. I believe in you and literally all of the science says you should and it's never been easier. There is a world of safer nicotine products out on the market. In the description of this video, I'm gonna put some links to just science, just education. This has been a Grim Green video. Let's stay cigarette smoke free literally every single day. <coughs> it's like 10.30 and then I'm uh, just gonna smoke, so.